Hi, my loves, it's Miss Simpson, and it is time for reading today. We are going to finish chapter 20 and 21 of How to Steal a Dog. I don't really have a lesson for you because I want to get to reading immediately so we can finish it. And I'm going to start a new book with you next week. And I will let you know what that book is when we get to the end of this. And I think you're going to be excited because it's my, I know I say this every time, but this one really is my all time favorite book all right, let's get started. All right, chapter 20. They're pretty short, but they are going to take me a second to read. So let's get started. I had to admit, wait, before we end, remember yesterday, they are going to take Willie home sometimes in the next chapter or two. So that's kind of what we're focusing on. I had to admit, Toby had been pretty good at stealing a dog. He thought of stuff like food and all, and he found the string leash. And best of all, he hadn't gooped up and told Mama when we had what we had done. So I felt kind of bad about taking Willie back to Carmela's without him. I knew he'd be mad as all get out. And I knew Mr. White would be mad as all get out if I missed school again and didn't bring a note from Mama. I knew he'd have a meeting with the principal like he warned me would happen. A meeting to talk about me and how much I'd been messing up. A meeting about why my mom wouldn't answer Mr. White's letters and all. I knew it was ahead of me if I did what I'd planned, but I was going to do it anyways. I made sure Toby was in his classroom, and then I hurried back outside and raced over to the old house. I could hardly get my feet to go fast enough as I pushed through the bushes on my way to the back. Please, Willie, be there. Please, Willie, be there, I said over and over inside of my head. As soon as I rounded the corner, I heard Willie's happy little yips. Hey there, fella, I called, hurrying over to the porch. Willie stuck his head through the torn screen and wagged his whole body. I sat on the step and let him jump through the screen door in my lap. How you doing, fella? I said, scratching the top of his head. He sniffed my backpack, making little snuffling noises. I pulled out the peanut butter sandwich I'd brought him and tore it into pieces. He gobbled them up, swallowing them whole without even chewing. Ready to go home? I said. Well, he perked his ears up and let out a little bark. That dog sure was smart. I untied his leash and started for the path that led to the road, but as I was crossing the clearing where Murky had camped, I noticed something that made me stop. A little green dog collar lying on top of the log that Mookie used to sit on. My ha heart dropped with a thud. That collar looked familiar. I picked it up and studied the tag. Yep, there it was, plain as day, Willie. I turned over and read, Carmela Whitmore, Whitmore, 27 Whitmore Road, Darby, North Carolina. I felt a big blanket of shame fall over me. Mookie had found Willie's collar. He'd known the truth about Willie. He'd known the truth about me. I looked down at Willie. He was watching my face like he knew every thought in my head. Mookie knew about us, Willie, I said. Willie whined and wagged his tail. I wonder why he was so nice to me, I said. Willie nudged me with his nose. I buckled the green collar around his neck and said, Come on, Willie, let's go home. By the time I got to the corner of Whitmore Road, Willie was pulling so hard, I thought that string was going to bust in two. I knew he was dying to race up the street, through the great gate, up the porch steps, through the doggy tour, and right into Carmela's lap. But I needed to slow down a minute. I had to make sure the coast was clear and nobody was outside. Hang on, little fella, I said. I squinted up the road, checking out the yards and driveways. Okay, Willie, I said, let's go. I hurried towards Carmela's home. By the time we got to the hedge, Willie was practically going crazy, leaping and carrying on. I tiptoed along the hedge, trying to keep Willie from yanking the string right out of my hand. I hoped Carmela wasn't home, but when I got to the gate, I could see her car in the driveway. I untied the string from Willie's collar. Then I took his whiskery face in both my hands and rubbed my nose back and forth against his. An Eskimo kiss. I lifted the latch and opened the gate. Then I let go of Willie's collar and watched him dash, dash across the yard and up the steps and then disappear through the doggy door into the house. I turned and hurried back up the road, but the further I got from Carmela's house, the heavier my feet felt. By the time I got to the corner, they felt like cement bricks, slowing me down until I couldn't take another step. What's wrong with you, Georgina? I said to myself. Don't stop now. Get on out of here before somebody sees you. But I guess my heart was taking over my feet, making me stop, making me turn around, making me walk on back to Carmela's. What do you think she's going to do at Carmela's? Make a prediction. Pause. Make a prediction. 
I stood outside the gate. Music from a radio drifted out of the screen door. More than anything, I wanted to disappear, to leave Whitmore Road and never come back. To just pretend like I'd never laid eyes on Willie or Carmilla, but I couldn't. I took a deep breath and put my hand on my heart. I could feel it beating fast and hard, and then I opened the gate and made my cement feet walk up the sidewalk to Carmela's front door. Carmela, I called through the screen door. Georgina, Carmela squealed from inside. Guess what? She came to the door carrying Willie. He was licking her face all over and wagging his whole body. Willie's home, Carmela said. Tears were streaming down her face and she looked about as happy as a person could be. He just came running right through the doggy door and into the kitchen like he'd never been gone. She kissed Willie's si nose. Can you believe that? She said. No, I said. I mean, yeah, I can believe that because, um, come on in. Carmela pushed the screen door open. I'm going to give him a bath. He's a mess. I stepped inside. But first, Carmela said, I'm going to cook him some sausage. Carmela, I followed her down the hall and into the kitchen. I, uh, I need to, uh, but Carmela wasn't listening. She was humming and she was talking to Willie while she put little sausages in a frying pan. Carmela! I said louder than I'd meant to because it sounded like a yell. She looked at me kind of surprised. I need to tell you something, I said. She put a lid on the pan and turned to me. Okay, she said. I looked down at the dirty linoleum floor. Lily had, Willie had left little muddy paw prints in the front stove where Carmela was standing. I stole Willie, I said to the floor. A terrible silence settled over the room. I could hear Carmela's wheezy breathing in and out, in and out. Finally, she said, what do you mean? I looked up. She was standing by the stove holding a fork. Her face was white, making her freckles stand out like sprinkles of cinnamon. Willie sat on the floor beside her, watching her, waiting for that sausage. I mean, I stole Willie, I said. I took him right out of your yard. Carmela gripped the edge of the counter for a minute and then pulled out a chair and sank into it. But why? She said. And then I did the hardest thing. I'd ever done. I told Carmela everything. I started with those three rolls of quarters and wadded up dollar bills in the mayonnaise jar, and I ended with Mookie leaving Willie's little green collar on that log. And then I waited for Carmela to hate me. But you know what? She reached out and she took my hands in hers, and she didn't sound at all hateful when she said, I guess bad times can make a person do thing bad things, huh? I hung my head and couldn't get myself to say another word. You did a real bad thing, Georgina, Carmela said. I nodded, keeping my head down so my hair would hide my face. Tears dropped right off the end of my nose and onto the floor. The room was silent except for the sizzle of the sausage on the stove and the tick, tick, tick of the clock over the refrigerator. Carmela pushed herself up off the chair and went over to the stove. She took the sausage out of the pan and cut them into pieces. Willie whined at her feet. Tick, tick, tick went the clock. I'm sorry, I said. Tick, tick, tick went that clock. Carmela dropped the sausage pieces into Willie's bowl. He gobbled them up and then kept licking the bowl, making it slide across the floor. I guess I better go, I said, but I didn't move. I stayed there with my head heavy, cement feet planting firmly on the cracked linoleum of Carmela's kitchen floor, waiting for her to make me feel better. But she didn't. So I moved my heavy feet, one in front of the other, down the hall, through the front door, and out onto the porch. I was almost at the gate when Carmela called, Georgina? I stopped and turned around. She stood up on the porch holding Willie. His tail wagged, thwack, thwack, thwack against her leg. Why don't you and Toby come by tomorrow, she said. Y'all could take Willie for a walk. I felt my whole self get lighter, as if that heavy blanket of shame I'd been wearing had been lifted right up off of me. I nodded. Okay, I said, we will. Then I hurried out of the gate and up the road. I couldn't wait to tell Toby what I'd done. I knew he wouldn't be mad when I told him how happy Willie was and how Carmela didn't hate us. I'd let him hold the leash when we walked Willie tomorrow and he wouldn't think I was mean anymore. When I got to the corner of Whitmore Road, I stopped and looked. Carmela was still standing on the porch holding Willie like she wasn't ever going to put him down. She waved at me and I waved back. Then just as I was about to turn and head back toward the highway, I glanced down and noticed my footprints in the dirt along the side of the road. I smiled, thinking about Mookie and his motto, about the trail you leave behind being more important than the path ahead. And then I turned and raced off towards school to wait for Toby. All right, let's pause before we keep going. Would you have reacted like Carmela did? I think I would have been much madder, and I don't think I would have reacted like that. I think I would have been 
awful. Do you think that you um, would have been as nice as she was? What do you think the theme is? Remember, theme is the lesson somebody learns. What do you think Georgina has learned from this besides just don't steal dogs? I want you to think about that as I read chapter one. The theme is the lesson or message in a story. And I want you to think, what in the world did Georgina learn from all of this? Okay. We lived in that nasty old car for two more days. Then one day, Mama came back from work and said, pack your bag, boys and girls, we're moving. Me and Toby looked at each other and then back at Mama waiting. She tossed two Snickers bar to the back seat and said, you heard me, we're moving and I'm talking a house, a real house. Me and Toby started whooping and bouncing up and down on the back seat and then we took down our beach towel wall and jammed all of our stuff into garbage bags, school books and dirty t-shirts, playing cards and comic books. As we drove to our new house, I felt a flutter of excitement as I thought about being normal again. I pictured myself going to school in clean clothes and having all my homework done and mama telling Mr. White that everything was fine now, so don't worry about Georgina anymore. I pictured me and Luann having a sleepover like we used to, painting our toenails and sharing our secrets, maybe working on our cooking badge for Girl Scouts. I even pictured myself sitting on my very own bed, wearing my new ballet shoes, combing my hair so I'd look nice for my ballet lessons with Luann and Lisa Thomas. And when we pulled up in front of our new house, me and Toby grinned at each other. It was a tiny white house with a rusty swing set in the red dirt yard and a refrigerator with no door sitting right up on the front porch. But I, it looked like a castle to me. Somebody named Louise was already living there with her baby named Drew. Louise was a friend of Patsy's and needed somebody to share the house with her and help take care of Drew and pay some of the rent. I didn't have my very own room, but I had my very own bed. Louise gave me a plastic laundry basket to keep my things in and told me to put it up on the closet shelf so Drew couldn't get my stuff. The first night in our new house, Mama brought home pizza and we watched TV. Before I went to sleep, I lay in my bed and stretched my legs out under the cool sheets. The tiny window across the room was open and a soft breeze lifted the faded curtains. Moss flapped and buzzed against the screen. I reached under my pillow and took out my glittery purple notebook. I turned to my How to Seal a Dog notes and in the dim glow of the hall light, I read through step eight again about making a decision about getting the reward or not getting the reward. And I smiled to myself when I read the part that said, that is the decision you will have to make. I knew I had made the right decision because my tapping insides had finally settled down and I still felt bad about what I'd done. I still wish I could turn back the time far enough to where I could do things different. But at least when I got into step eight, I made the right decision. I turned to a fresh page of my notebook and wrote May 3rd. Step nine, those are all the rules for how to steal a dog, but I drew a red heart around the word but, and then I wrote great big letters, do not steal a dog because I drew a blue circle around because, and then I took out my gold glitter pen and wrote, it is not a good idea. The end. I closed my notebook and slid it back under my pillow. As I lay there in my very own bed, I thought about Mookie. I wondered if what he was doing right that very minute. Was he making Hoover gravy? Was he wiggling that three-fingered hand of his at somebody? Was he fixing somebody's car? Where was he leaving his trail now? I thought about Willie too. I bet he was curled up at the foot of Carmela's bed because his chewed up toys dreaming about sardines and liver pudding, happy as anything to be back home again. I looked over at Toby sucking his thumb in his bed next to mine and then I tiptoed over to the window and looked out into the night. I took a deep breath the air smelled good like honeysuckle and new mowed grass. It didn't stink at all. And that's the end. Ah, what a cute book, right, guys? I think it is a very, very, very cute book. I love this book. So let's pause real quick. I wanted you to tell me what you think Georgina learned. I think she learned not to steal. I think that she learned that you can't judge a book by its cover. Like she judged your, she judged Carmela. She judged Carmela's house. And Carmela was nothing like she imagined, nothing, nothing like she thought. I think she learned not to lie and not to steal. And not only not to lie, just, just be honest. And to, that being honest is much better than lying all the time. And I think she also learned that things get better. 
Yes, you might be in a bad situation now, but things get better. All right. So I want you to think about what Georgina learned. And then write down below, you are going to do corrections on your passage from yesterday. So yesterday, everybody did a reading passage and you, no matter what grade you make, you have to do corrections. So just like last week, you need to get out a piece of paper and you need to write down the numbers that you missed. So go back to your passage from Thursday and let's say you missed number one and number two. Well, you are going to write your new answer, and this time I am not going to tell you your, your the answers. I'm going to make you find out a new answer. So let's say number one is A. Now, I don't know this to be fact because I haven't graded them yet, so maybe number one is A. Not only do you have to put the number and your correction, but you also have to put why. Why did you get it wrong? Why did you choose that answer? Literally, you can either tell me why you got the answer wrong or why you chose the new answer that you did. So you are going to do your corrections, take a picture of it, and turn it in. Only correct the ones that you got wrong. So if you made 100, you don't have corrections today, and you can just turn in a funny selfie of yourself. I don't care. or not turn in anything. But if you made missed one, two, three, you ha do have to do your corrections. All right, guys. I love you all so much. Um, I am out Today's Friday, but I'm out this afternoon. I'm leaving school around 11 o'clock, 11.15, I think. Um, so I will not be on for help time today. So if you need me, you can message on Canvas inbox and I will try to look. Everybody has to turn in that reading passage on Thursday in order for it to be graded in time for you to do your corrections. I'm going to check one more time before I leave on Friday. And if you don't have anything and you haven't done, gotten your grade for that, you will have to make it up next week. All right, guys. I love you all so much. Have a great day.